you for what you did. Thank you for your death. Thank you for your, for your resurrection. Thank you for, your, for the price you paid. Thank you for dying so that I will find life. Thank you for not just coming and saying, oh, these ones are condemned. No, but you came and turned the condemnation to something pure and something clean. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for you, you called me into the family of God. Thank you for being a lover, a father, a friend, a brother. Thank you for you did what no man can do. Greater love has no man than this than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. And thank you for you have called us friends. We just bless you and we love you this morning. And we ask that our praise be accepted unto God this, this wonderful morning. And our worship be accepted as the evening sacrifice. In the name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say welcome to church. With a smile on your face, say welcome to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to give some dance step today because we're going to praise the name of the Lord. I hope you know that today is Resurrection Sunday. So just lift your voice and give God praise. Hallelujah. Are we ready now? Come on.
Oh oh oh, oh de la bari. Oh de la oh 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 de la Oh 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 de la bari. Pizza, 
Resurrection Sunday, Jesus paid it all, and He said it is finished. Ah, hey.
you just go ahead and give him glory? No one else died. No one else died. No one else. No one else died. No one else. No other God died. Come on, go ahead and give him glory. No other God died. No, no, no. We believe in the one who died and resurrected. We believe in the resurrection power. Yes, God, we believe. We believe. Go ahead and just give him glory. No one like Yahweh God. No one like the son that died. The son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings and he rose from death with healing in his wings. Can you go ahead and bless the Lord this, this wonderful morning? Because death is cancelled. Death is defeated. Death in your family. Death in your marriage. Death in your health. Death in your business. Death in your education. Death is cancelled because the son of man is arising. He has, right, he has risen. He has risen with healing. Come on, go ahead and bless the Lord. Go ahead. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 Romans 10 17 NKJV for it by, by one man's offense death reigned through the one much more than those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness who reign in, who reign in life through the one Jesus Christ much more than those who, 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 who receive the, the abundance of grace and gifts and righteousness who reign in life are there people who are reigning with God this morning are there people who are reigning with Christ this morning? Come on, lift up your hands and just say, Jesus, thank you so much for the life you've given to me. Thank you for the life you've given to me. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for I reign in abundance with you. Thank you, God, for dying and raising again so that I will reign with you. Father, we just give you glory. Thank you for our nation is reigning with you. Thank you for families are reigning with you, Lord. Thank you for a dose that is reigning with you. Thank you for businesses are reigning with you. Lord, we just thank you. Come on, go ahead and give him thanks. The Son of God is lifted high. 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 The Son of God is lifted you gave us life the price for life is death and Lord you went deep down just so that we can rise up Lord we are grateful thank you for our nation thank you for, for we accept your death and it is this reason that we thrive Lord we bless you thank you for our families thank you for the there is healing in our emotions today thank you because every death thing is awakening today in the name of Jesus blessed be your name our father in Jesus name we have prayed come on celebrate Jesus hallelujah as we receive pastor joy 
Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the fair music? Please help me celebrate fair music. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir, for your sacrifices. Praise God. All right, FBC, let's listen to the announcement. Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Firm Foundation. Be on May 27th. We'll be at the Reposition Summit. See you there. Oh, yes. We plan on bringing 20 students across 50 public schools here in Benin City. We have various levels of engagement for these children and young adults during the event. We have quiz competition, debate competition, and we to give them a problem within our society for them to provide a solution to it. You can be part of this by giving to us the transportation, the feeding, and the prizes that will be awarded to these children during the event. It is not about the competition, but to instill the right values and we're not living culture in our society. For more information, you can call the numbers displayed on your screen. Supernatural is not an intervention, it's a system. You are supposed to be working the supernatural naturally. Someone comes in, the person is sick. As you are offering the thing you are selling, you're also offering prayers. You don't need to be a pastor to be super spiritual. When you bring light to a place where there's darkness, darkness can't comprehend it. The environment does not want to, first of all, accept you as light. So he says, meditate. Sit down in your closet and tell yourself you are light. The reason why you have a lot of unsuccessful Marita or business relationship is because the way we see people in our heart might not be the way they see us in their heart. We are trained to see the weakness in other people by default. So it takes a lot of reorientation or an identity transformation for us to be able to come to that place where we celebrate the strengths in other people. And under their extreme poverty is not a virtue of the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, everything that has ever happened to you in life, God is using it to prepare us for the great nation we are about to build. Hallelujah. The whole essence of the electronic announcement is for us to mark our calendar. Engages in April, transform is in May, reposition is in May. So don't be caught on our way. Let's set our calendar. Just to remind us that intercessory prayer still holds every Tuesday by 4.30 p.m. in church. And Saturday is evangelism. At the first service we had, people who had never gone for evangelism were afraid, went out yesterday, and they had testimonies to share. Please, let's not forget to join them every Saturday by 8.30 um, midweek service is still 11.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. You can join any of the stream. 
Can I beg us to stand even as we receive our Father for the word? Let's stand and the anointing you celebrate, you attract. Let's celebrate our Father. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let's lift up our hands and our voices and bless the name of the Lord this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We appreciate you for this wonderful day. We give you thanks and praise. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord. Ask for clarity of mind. Ask for clarity of mind. Ask for understanding today. The greatest teacher is the Holy Spirit. Ask him to teach you today, even as the word comes. Father, we thank you for today. We give you thanks and praise. We appreciate you for this wonderful time. Teach us today. Expose our minds to things that we are not used to. And help us to accept the things that are hard to accept, but that will bring life to us. And they will bring light and increase to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Welcome us, joining us even online, on site. And even our family houses all over Benin, Lagos, and Abuja. For this um, last weekend in the month of March, that's what we do. And I want you to sit and relax. For this is Resurrection Sunday as the word celebrates it. But I want you to know that for, belief, for a believer, the end is not death. The end is resurrection. So no matter what has come your way, what resurrection signifies is that nothing around you, die, around you dies. That even if it dies, it will resurrect. There's always a redemptive answer. That's what I want you to know. And that's what this season should let you know. And um, for us, we need to start studying. And uh, we are on a journey in our family to study about the feast of the Lord. And if you understand the feast of the Lord, the coming of the Lord will not be scary to you. Because it has already played out. The coming of the Lord is not, um, is not um, to, to scare you. If you understand the different feasts. You have the spring feast. You have the fall feast. You have the, uh, uh, you have the four feast in the, four, in the spring feast. And you have the three in the fall feast. The, Bible, the uh, theologians believe that Jesus, the first time came coming was to fulfill the first feast which is Passover, first fruit, unloving bread, and feast of Pentecost, which is what we are going to celebrate in 50 days from now. Then also, you must understand the, yam, uh, the feast of trumpets, which is the Yom Torah, Yom Kippur, which is the day of atonement, and also the feast of tabernacles. If you understand this, then, um, when they say the day and the hour, no man knows, when they were saying it to each other, they know the day. It's like me telling you, I will meet you on New Year Day. Uh -huh. The day and the hour nobody knows is was a day that had been set aside before the blowing of the trumpet. So if you read the Bible with your, your mindset from testimony road, so that you will not say I'm talking your area, then you will understand that some of the translation or the interpretation we give to scriptures are not right. The 40 authors of the Bible were Jewish people. And they wrote it from that perspective. There's a time I did and I, I did it also in the we church conference in Lagos. When we talked about the scriptures. The mistake you use, you, you have in reading the scriptures. And if you are here, please get the message on how to study the Bible master class where we talked about the static appropriation that many people do not know the history behind some things and so they give it a wrong interpretation. So in studying all this, we discovered that this year, Passover and, Re and uh, um, the Resurrection Week did not tally. So next month, which is April, we are going to do a fast. Get ready. Our fast is not... Your, let me just tell you, your fast does not move God. It cleanses you. Hmm? 
he gets you closer to him to hear him. If you think your fasting will kill your enemies, people have fasted, the enemies are still getting stronger. In fact, we even prayed for the last president to go. He came out stronger. I was wondering, is it that God did not answer our prayer? He's the one that gives life. He, doesn't, he, he takes it, but not the way you want him to do it. So I encourage you to um, get some of our messages and listen to them. These days and time, we, are, we, we like to listen to short messages. If he has passed 30 minutes, you are distracted. If I tell you, let's engage the Bible for two hours. Some of you are just entering church now. You came 30 minutes after. Don't be in a hurry to leave today because I'm looking at you. You can't come to church one hour for 52 Sundays and expect to be a strong believer. You can't. And sometimes when we leave church, I've tested it. I get home and I want to put another message for us to listen. They'll say, ah, ah. How many of you do that? Say, not the church where they come from. Why another Bible study? The Torah is supposed to be our common, normal conversations on a daily basis so that we know what God has for us. I'd like to wish you a happy resurrection time for nothing dies in your life. Everything will be resurrect. But today's message is not a message you have not listened to before. Some people were shocked when I brought this message. It's what I heard. This month now, we are halfway through the year 5784. We, are, we have another six months to round off to get into the year 5785. But when I look at the way people reacted this year, I've been wondering. But this thing that is happening now, it was said before. Why are you not afraid? He said, you know how much dollars was? It was when I knew dollars was one to 97 naira. Until I met somebody when, he said, when I was in school in the U.S., my father used to send me one naira. When he sends me one naira uh, and some money, when he sends me money in naira, one dollar, one naira is equal to four dollars. And the man is still alive now. He's not even shouting. If you say you saw naira at 97 naira to one dollar, what will he say? So, let's look at Today, I want to talk about the prophetic significance of the year 5784. The prophetic significance. God will not uh, do something on earth without revealing it. And if you look at the creation, you will see the hand of God. God does not hide something from you. He hides something for you. For it is the glory of God to conceal a matter but the glory of kings to search them out. This year, 5784, is a prophetic year. Genesis 1, 14 to 19 says, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons. Underline that word that the, <clears throat> the lights in the heavens are for signs and seasons. In other words, they are to mark for seasons, for days and years. So, it's not our chronos, it's the season, that is the light that marks the season. And let there be lights in the firmament of heavens to give light on the earth, and it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide light from darkness and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. The evening and morning. Very, 
the Bible does not, uh, it's not that uh, when we are writing, they say that this or no. It's specific. Evening and morning. Not morning and evening. Which means that a new day starts in the evening. And the seventh day, there was neither evening nor morning. Read it. So, we were born into perpetual rest. The first day that man saw in life was rest. I didn't say sleep. Because you can sleep and not rest. How many of you slept tired and woke up tired? Some people slept tired and they woke up more tired. Why? Because in the sleep they were fighting battles. They were calculating how they were going to move. So they did not rest. But that's not where we're going. We're looking at the decade that we entered in the year 2019 to 2020. The decade of 5780. It was the decade of the mouth. 5770 was the decade of the eyes. So what you saw in the year, in the decade 5770, was what you were supposed to be speaking in a decade of the mouth. 5780. And it is that time when we entered 5780 that they put, gave us face marks. They call it face masks, but it was covering only our mouth and nose. I thought we were like me, mascara, but no. But they just covered our mouth. In the decade of the mouth that you are supposed to be speaking, your mouth, they covered it. Even today, your, our mouths are covered. Not physically now. We are, we are no longer speaking. Or even if we open our mouth to speak, we speak darkness. We speak what the situation is saying. So 5780, that this decade that you are in is the decade of the mouth. Then this year specifically is the year 5784, represented by the letter Dalit. The symbol of the letter Dalit is a door. And the symbol of, the, of uh, Dalit is a man walking towards five, which is what we will talk, talk about. But also it's a man bent over waiting to hear something from the one he's facing. He's not facing the word. He's not facing anybody, but he's facing the one that commissioned him. This is the year where we are entering the open doors, but the open doors has to be because we had the door to enter. I've heard people say, say when I tell them, say, they want to travel here or they want to do this. The first thing I ask them, did you hear from God? The next thing they will tell me, even the situation, not they talk to you. How many of you, the situation has spoken to you? Raise up your hand. Or don't raise up your hand, just wink at me. <laughs> the situations has spoken to you, not what God said. When it was famine in the land, he told Abraham, go to Egypt. When it was famine in Isaac's time, he said, remain in Gerah. You must understand that, the door. So this is the year of the door, and it's the year where we have to uh, enter the door. It's the door of habitation. It's the door to keep you safe. It's the door that God will open by himself, not the door you will go and open. You know, when we talk about, you know, sometimes when we say it's the grace of God, some people think we are hiding, as the grace is about uh, uh, being lazy. No, no. Grace of God is that I am calling what is telling me to do. Because when you interpret grace as being irresponsible, that's not God's grace. It makes the rain to fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. But all of us must go and plant. That's his grace. It makes me to see things that others do not see. So that I will take advantage, not do one sleep. That's God's grace. When people say there is a casting down, he opens my eyes to see there is a lifting up. That's the grace of God. He hides me away from things. The mercy of God. So you must understand that it's not about the call. Because when we say grace of God, people think, oh, you are trying to be religious. 
No doubt people can use the grace of God religiously. So 5784 is the year of open doors. We must get that clearly. I'm doing a review because I have discovered that there's no need to say new things. Let's make a repetition and teach again because this year many of us are panicking. We are panicking. We are doing sometimes I say now wow. But when I was saying this year of open door, people say, yeah. Even after the cure for death, that places, I say you were much healthy and wealthy. They say, yeah. So two things plague you. Number one, forgetfulness. You forget where you are coming from. Two, ignorance. You don't know what you are supposed to do or you don't want to even read. Listen. People, believers no longer read, read the Bible. Not to even talk about books. If a book is more than 100 pages, they will say they are not doing an exam. How can you grow without reading? Daniel said, I understood by books. It is only us that want to do the things that God said we should not do and expect his blessing. Is that not fraud? It is fraud. We want to use the things that is against his kingdom, do it, and expect God to you with unsanctified mercy, mercy, as your father used to do for you, to bless you when you are not listening to him. Jesus said this statement, if you love me, keep my commandments. Today, we're not keeping commandments. In fact, I was talking to somebody, and this is what I just got. People don't even care, don't care what their pastor thinks. Sometimes I see your status. I see you, 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 you carry your deku for hand. You, take, you even put that for status. Am I saying that this, you, 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 you open what you are not supposed to open, you put your status. Then you now call people to be born again. The, the, your glass, what is there, is not something to be proud of. You go and drink it now, you, are, you, 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 you go and jump somebody, you say, my enemies are pursuing me. Listen. What is now wrong now is not right. What is wrong, we celebrate it as being right. It is not. It's not. The Bible was given to us. God gave us the Bible. Why did he give us the Bible? He gave us the Bible so that we can learn how to think like him. Before Jesus comes to reconcile him to him. To reconcile us to him. That's what the Bible was given. So sometimes, I look at your thinking, I look at it, it's not scriptural. It's not. Then some people want me to be conformed to their way of thinking. I can't. No matter how they hardship, I must stay with what God has said. Who told you? That when the blessing of God is upon your life or you are having money, you, when you have money, the blessing of God is on your life. Who told you that? We have preached a message of survival. I'm not saying survival is not good. You have to survive before you move to success. Then you, the ultimate is significant. Some people don't even want success. They want significance. Where is the house of Mother Teresa? Where are the children? Answer. But two nations that we are struggling for his grave, for our grave. Even our debt. In fact, the US Senate says when moderator talks, they listen. Where's the mansion left for the children? What's her net worth? She was a billionaire. Huh? So sometimes when I hear Christians say, I've been giving tight and giving tight, I never still get money. Did they tell you tight is for giving, for, 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 for being a billionaire? That's not what scripture says. It's the way of life that his children should live. That's all. 
So your giving is not kalu kalu. Okay, what if you give? Okay, just imagine now. If you are not supposed to marry. It's in scripture. There are some people who are born to be single. It's the whole gospel. Sometimes we don't say it. Some people who are born because of their lifetime assignment, even Jesus said, they decided not to marry. Telling me about a 70 year old man who's 70 year old woman who's an intercessor, prophetic, has never been married, never has a child. Her consecration is that this is what I've consecrated to do for the Lord. That kind of person not go get the kind of reward when you get. Because earth is not final. There's, there's eternity. Earth is not final, there's eternity. So whatsoever you are is a dress rehearsal for, for something too. Why did I take that? I did a master class on Wednesday called Waiting You Carry Master Class. And I read the story of Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, they told his wife in one conversation, I don't know what I'm even supposed to do. In his height of success, he was, he was confused. And the only song that Elvis Presley got a Grammy for was a song he wrote from Matthew 25, where he says, I want to hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. What are the types of doors mentioned in the Bible? The first door is the door of family. The door of family. Yesterday, I told the men that came for, trans, uh, for parenting seminars, I, I, I give them, a, 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 I appreciated them. Parenting is not for the faint-hearted, and parenting does not start with your wife. I had to even appreciate the men who were not married, who were here. The moment you marry, in fact, even before you marry, there were people, there are people who are not married who are fathers, who are mothers. So parenting is, is about taking responsibility of Father God for people who may not even know where they are going to. So parenting is responsibility. In Genesis chapter 18, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great tree of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. And Abraham looked up and saw the three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He was at the entrance of his tent. He was standing there. Men, you must be at the entrance of your house. You must, take, you must be a watchman to your house. Women, you must also stand the gap. But the primary intercessor or the chief intercessor of the house is not the woman. It's the husband. Is the man, is the father in the home. The only ministry Jesus took with him to heaven was the ministry of intercession. Young men or even married men here, one of the things we do not do is that we most of the time complain about our wife, but we never intercede for them. A woman is constantly under attack. Constantly. Why? The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. So who will live? Who will live fight? A woman is the warehousing of the, of the seed that you give to her. And that's why her moods change. It takes a man to say, you know what? Nothing will happen to you. You are in my house. You will not die. It takes a godly man to stand in the gap and remove some of the things that she brought from her, father, from her father's house. And say, no, that thing will not thrive in this house. It's for you to be discerning to understand. God is going to open doors. There are a lot of marriages that will take place this year. <laughs> Things that were set back. You need to stand in the gap for your wife. You need to stand in the gap. If Abraham was not there, how will he see the visitation of the Lord? 
I'm not saying that now you take a chair and go and sit in front of your house. That's not what I'm saying. But you must stand and understand that when you come to your house and all your foul souls are sick, you tell sickness, I didn't invite you. The daughter family, I pray that barren wombs will be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. Every barrenness, whether physical or spiritual or even financial, is broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Door to the family, which is the door to, your, to, to private dwellings. You must put a lock and allow only what God is bringing in. And disallow what God did not bring in. Women, you must stand with your husband. Because the greatest place to find where two or three are gathered, as to, if you agree as touching something, is in the house. No matter the suffering that you are going through, don't disconnect. Stay together. You will wither the storm. It will go. Number two door is the door to heaven. Next month, which is starting tomorrow, we are starting a new series called The Throne Life. The Throne Life. You are seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. If you are seated with him, then you don't see the way the world sees. You see the way he sees. You know, sometimes, I just believe that some of us think that God is standing in heaven based on what is going on. Say, if God, if God, if God is really God, why does he come and solve the world hunger? He left you here to solve it. Not only that, less than 10% of the pe people of the world, the wealth they have can quench all these things. But what do they do with it? And that's why you should pray like Solomon. Lord, make my name big. Make me great. So that I'll be a voice to those that don't have voice. It's not about using your wealth to harass people and make them small. No. It's for you to understand that the door to heaven, there are revelations that will be given to you. Revelations. Revelations. Revelations of what is happening today. Revelations of what you are going to do that... You will be like Jesus and say, he himself knew what to do. Well, okay, what will give him that, that confidence? 5,000 men beside women, hungry. And he said, feed them. That means he knows something that, we, that they don't know. And he didn't even tell them, don't worry, I will feed them. He said, you feed them. The capacity to do things this year is inside you. All you need to do, in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 1, if you can put the passion translation, I want to read it for you so that you understand. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 1. And the passion translation. Is anybody behind there? If you have it, can somebody read it? Yeah. It's better to be honest, even if it leads to poverty. than to live like a dishonest fool that is rich. Verse 2. It is, it, it is scripture. It's scripture. It says it's better to be honest even if it leads to poverty. Look at what it says. It says even. The question, does it lead to poverty if you are honest? Do you know that many of us believe that honesty leads to poverty? Verse 2, the best way. Now, he's not saying, what is the best way? That's where we are, I'm going to. The best way to live is with revelation knowledge. For without it, you will grow impatient and run right into error. The best way to live is with revelation knowledge. I'm not talking about knowledge of your school, the Y, the X. No, I'm not talking about BSc. I'm talking about revelation knowledge. The best way to live, where you will wake up in the morning, Huh? You will hear behind you and say, you know what? I'm going to send three people to you and I want you to resume work at 6.30. What you will do by 6.30 is that when you get to that place, lock yourself in there and begin to declare this thing I will tell you. By 7 o'clock, open the door. 
That's what I'm talking about. And he said, you know what? I want you to do that for the next six months. Because we are used to quick, 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 quick results. You can do that for six days and be tired. The best way to live is by revelation knowledge. Or else, you will run impatient. This year is the year where the door to the sanctuary of the Lord will be opened to you. Where revelations will be given to you based on where he has sent you to. It's not the time to say, ah, bless now waiting, now waiting, Joanne, they do now. All of us, bah. We are moving to this place. No. What did God tell you to do? What did God tell you to do? The door to heaven. The doors to the sanctuary. In Genesis 28 verse 16 to 17. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is not other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Listen, where do you feel closer to God? Please be there. Please be there. Some of you, you feel closer to God. You come to a church and you, and you, you, you come to need in, in the altar. Please, if that's how you feel closer, please do it. Some people feel closer to God by facing the wall. When you're in your house, which room do you feel closer to God? The only problem is that don't tell me that to hear God, I need to come to altar. No. There are some of you, you love to pray lying on your back. Please do it. You're, some of you love to pray leaning. Some of you love to pray reading scriptures. Walking at the back of your house to and fro. That's where you, that's where you, you like to be on that nature as you pray. Please, get your revelation. Know your sacred pathways. Know your sacred pathways. Some of you is worshipping. Without worship, you cannot do anything. Please, it's not about the key you have. Open up yourself. The best way to live is, he said, I, and God is in this place and did not know it. May that not be your testimony. The door to heaven. It's only when we say we are going to heaven is that we want, when we die, we'll go there. How can you enter your country when you are only dead? You can. So every day of this year, you should visit heaven. The pastor, no one die you. <laughs> but you are the one that told me we are seated in heavenly places. Huh? Huh? Some of us, all we think we are the case, only here. It doesn't move anywhere. When I'm saying it, you are seated with in heavenly places. Come on, shout places. I have discovered when you are preaching, people say, right on. They will be busy. They are not learning. They are not le you are just confirming what they know. They are not learning. <laughs> For God, so love, love. I'm just confirming what you know. When you are not talking, and you are looking at me like this, mm hmm but because I don't want to be, I don't want to be afraid of you. I will put some small things so that you laugh. I will okay. They are here with me. They are not sleeping. You need revelation. You need, it doesn't matter whether you have bank money, uh, uh, bank alert, or you have money in the bank. Forget it. You need to be able to descend. This is where we are going. And if you have made a mistake, repent and come back. Don't go again. Just come back. So that's the second door that will be open. The third door that will be open to us is the door to government. We're talking about authority and influence. There are people who are gatekeepers in this city that you don't know. 
gatekeepers. The Bible says Jesus, knowing that everything has been delivered to him, put his garment down and tied on his, wrapped himself with the towel and began to wash the feet of the disciples. What do you do with the authority and influence? An authority and influence is not about position. We like position, eh? Hiya, yeah. And we like to know people in opposition. In position. I didn't say opposition. Position. We like to know people in position so that when we get there, the doors will open to us. Then we can, then we can do anything we like. No, 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 no. No. You see, the gates to the city, it's talking about people who are watchmen. Who will say, this cannot happen in my city under my watch? It can't. You can be in position, you might not be. Who was the strongest man then in, in that land? Was it Naaman or the king? It was that small girl that directed Naaman to where she, he would get his healing. That nobody knows her name. That's the type of door that God will open your way. I'm telling you, those doors that, you know, listen. Why are you friends to the president to go and ask for money and contract? Some of you are saying, Pastor, not true, yes? <laughs> Our time has come. What if that, what if, that's not why God is opening that door for you. He's opening the door for you so that you come into influence, influence and, and, and play, be in that place for a generation you may never see. This is what will make you not to be irrelevant in life. When you steward your position of influence for the benefit of many, not only your pocket. Do you know that you actually believe that if somebody is a commission now that receives commission, if he leaves there, never build a house for Amagba, buy new. Sorry, I don't know why I always say Amagba. If you never build a house for Bini, build a house for Lagos, build a, they say, never buy a house, never do We ourselves will say now fool. True of us. Are you not corrupt? No, are you not corrupt? Have you asked the, the salary of a commissioner? He said, Pastor, that one are the... So really, we even expect them to steal. That's all. But when they finish stealing, we'll be angry. A man was appointed one position one time. He went to sleep. When he woke up, he saw 1,500 messages. From whom? My brother, congratulations. No. We're classmates. So. My brother, con I hope you remember me. Because we got so some seminars that say position yourself. In this kingdom, you don't position yourself. You allow God to position you. You say, Pastor, how do I allow God to position me? Follow him. How do I follow him? Do what he says you should do. How do I do what he says you should do? Read his Bible, you know what to do. Listen to his voice. So Ephron, Genesis 23. So Ephron's field in Machpelah near Mamre, both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees within the borders of the field were did dead to Abraham as his property in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. They were did dead to him, the gates of the city. Abraham was a man of influence in the city. But what did he do? Abraham used his influence before God, one, to intercede for a nation. He used his influence that he had and the people he has raised to rescue his brother 
and his household, being the king's man redeemer from the places that they have taken him. This is the brother that I also took out of, he took from your money. That means that this is the season for you to operate, that to get into the door of heaven so much, you need to run, run away from unforgiveness and bitterness. You say, that's how he did me. That's how he did not do me. The question is that, how did you do people? Is it, is it difficult to live with you? Sometimes it may be difficult to live with you. Especially when you are very, very intelligent. You have degrees, more than the degrees in the, in the, in the, in the thermometer. So difficult. Difficult. So the doors of, to heaven is about revelation. Then the fourth one is the door to temple treasury. It's the door to finances. That's why, in, that's what baffled me that when all this thing began to show, we, I saw my children crying. I saw my children complaining. Last year we said it was abundance and overflowing and over, and overflow lack. And many of us actually saw the hand of God. So how come this year you are not panicking? Say this is another year. So the God of yesterday is no longer. That's why when, when, when we say it's the same yesterday, today. Somebody say forever. You, his mouth. It's, it's, because when I hear you complete scripture, it's finished. <laughs> but as dollars became 1,500. 1,006, 1,8, You started prophesying, 2,000. <laughs> you see, see the way you will prophesy. You prophesy. Now it's 1, 2. Nobody talk. I don't understand you people. He's saying, I just buy one, two, he goes, still climb. You see, that is how we, that's how, that's how we speak negativity. We destroy our environment. We destroy our nation. And when it happens, say, I talk, you are a prophet of doom. For power of life and death is in your tongue. When you speak life, it's supposed to come. So when you speak death, it will come too. I will never open my mouth to insult Nigeria. Never. Never. And I will eat the good of the land. I will never open my mouth to insult my president. I know it's not your president, but it's my own. Oh yeah, give me another one. You know what I pray for him? Wisdom. Strength. Keep his family. Let no evil come near them. Let me say now, this man. You should wake up. Oh. You, are you good? You, if we make you president, now what will you do? I've heard people say, what did they do? Enter. So we open our mouth. It's easy to destroy than to build. I told somebody recently, I said, I will not use my, hand, my mouth and my hand to tear down what I have built. It doesn't matter whether I'm angry. The doors to temple treasure. I didn't say the doors to temple treasures. Treasure. You, you don't spend dollars. Now, Santana Market, you they go. You go there. You say, Pastor, you don't understand. What I used to, what I buy, dollars affect it. Now, let me tell you, does dollar affect God? The reason, most times, why you are, why you are this broken is that your revelation knowledge is small. Every time you are worried, you are now so conscious of an inferior kingdom. That's why you are worried. 
you are conscious of an inferior kingdom. If you are conscious of God's kingdom, what will happen is that you will tell them, even if he slays me, I'll wait for him. And you know what? I know my redeemer lives. There is no child. Have you ever seen? Okay, during this time of one seven, one nine, and all these things, did you see children coming together and gathering saying, oh, wow, dollar and one nine? I'm talking about two years old children, five years. Did you see them? They will still tell you, Mommy, I want to eat Indomie. You say Indomie is not for dinner. I say, Mommy, I need Indomie. He said, how will I get it? He said, I need it. Because they, they, they don't care how. You know why you, are, why you are worried? You are thinking for God. Osas, does your children tell you? He says, say, ha, ha. They want to still eat even more. Now they are on holidays. <laughs> you are even safer than being away. In school, is the, the wait month and take the, the this thing. N at night, it's only one. But now, sisters, they don't even care. They don't even think. They know they think. They know they, they don't reason. Say, let's reason together. Let's make everything cool for our family. Our father is stressed financially. They don't even care. Why? They know that you will provide. They have that consciousness, my father will provide. My father has the money. But you now, you are not a child, you are an adult. Adult provide for them. Mm -hmm. But you will, when people ask you, are you a child of God? Say, yes, I'm a child of God. No, stop saying you are a child of God. Say you are an adult of God. Because really, you have asked God, Lord, give me provision. Then you will still finish praying. You won't sleep. Say, Lord, how will you do it? My business is not finished. Brother Osagbo will refuse to send me money. You are now navigating how, how it will be. Your brain is too small. Just receive. In time of harvest, you don't do anything. You just go and pluck. Oh, you didn't get it. In time of harvest, you don't sow, you don't spin, you just go and pluck. Why? The harvest has permitted. You have come into a season of harvest. You have come into a season of harvest. How will the money come? It doesn't matter. You don't need to steal even if you earn 100,000 or 50,000. Because your income should be more than your salary. And how do you calculate income? Not by a lot. You calculate income by its provision. You want money to buy a bag of rice. Is that not true? You want money to buy two cartons of Indomie. Is that not true? What if as you are going, somebody stops you and says, I just feel God told me to give you two bags of rice and, two, and ten cartons of Indomie. <laughs> somebody said, now, how that one will be now? He said, adult, don't come. Different thinking. Adult, adult. <laughs> he said, Pastor, you're by talker. For this time... <laughs> I'm listening to what you are saying, the secret conversation of your heart. Especially for those of you that have money, you earn big money, you don't ask God again. You know what I hear you say? Now this morning, now you see they ask God. Meanwhile, your child asks you for everything. Everything, everything he asks. Sometimes God needs to withdraw money from your hand. Why? So that you can trust him. Because if you just get to a place now, they say somebody just, uh, this thing is as missing. It's missing. You really go quickly go and buy another one. You won't ask God, Lord, why will he get missing? The Bible says, if a thief steals and is caught, it should, it should repay seven times. This is the revelation. If they steal from you, activate that principle. It will be revealed, it will be, it will be restored to you more than seven times. Do you know we are so used to, every time you talk this thing, they'll say, Pastor, not the face reality. Instead of, us to, instead of you to tell us, Niger, don't finish.
in Genesis 1, 16 to 19, we saw it. The light to rule in the day is different from the light to rule in the night. If God has called you a nursery school teacher, embrace it. Don't think, don't ask yourself, ah, 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 nursery school teacher, how much they call they pay them? For them to come buy build house. Why is he only build house? He said, Pastor, you know we must get house. I agree. In your lifetime assignment, are you faithful in it? In that nursery school teaching, is they tell you that it's only when you see children you should be a nursery school teacher? What are the ways that God wants you to do it better? Have we asked him? Are there curriculums you need to develop that should, should be transmitted all over the world? That the world is waiting for? We should ask ourselves all these questions. Because it's not about your assignment that is making you poor. It's about the stewardship of your assignment. May God give you the grace to accept your assignment. In the name of Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, everybody wants to be nurse. All of a sudden, everybody wants to be What is all this now? I'm not saying you should not be a nurse. Get it clear. Get it clear. What if God says you are supposed to teach secondary school students? Somebody say, God forbid. God forbid. But when your children are in secondary school, you want a teacher. How many of you want to be the driver? Raise up your hand. Driver is driver. Whether you drive bicycle or driving plane, you are a driver. But you want to go to a park and see somebody that will drive you to Lagos. It's the stewardship of your assignment. The next one is the year of opening doors with our mouth. This year is characterized by opening doors with your mouth. With your mouth. You come to your house. It seems as if lack has kidnapped the house. You lift up your voice. Declare, declare, this house will receive the abundance of heaven. When God saw chaos, he panicked. Huh? He panicked. He worried. He called for a council meeting. He went to social media. The spirit of the Lord moved and he spoke. The same thing to end chaos is inside of you. Speak. I will never beg one day in my life. I will never lack roof over my head. These are the declarations you declare. My home is full of peace. No chaos in this home. Joy, peace, and righteousness reign in this home. That's the kingdom of God. It must reign in this home. When you see evil, don't speak the evil. Now, wow. Wow. Now, wow, we'll not get rice for this house. Is that what they told you? Food will never be finished in this house. Nothing finishes in this house, it needs replacement. So I tap into the replacement resources of heaven and it's coming to this house. Speak over your nation and your city. Don't think when robbers are robbing your street, don't go and raise your fence alone. You can decide to raise your fence, but speak and say, no evil will come on this street. As long as I hear, I declare angels. Let angels arise. Angels that have been assigned to this street, where are you? Now begin to function. I wish one million Nigerians will wake up and bless our president. I wish two million, only two million Nigerians will wake up every day and say, God bless Nigeria. How many of you, Nigeria never do anything for you? Raise up your hand. What did you do for yourself? Raise up your hand. What did this Nigeria don't do for myself? I don't raise up hand. <laughs> if you went to primary school, if you went to secondary school, and you now graduated, and you read medicine, engineering, 
with our resources. The salary as as two years ago, so in Uniben, for just salary alone was one billion naira every month. In a year, twelve billion. A lecturer told me, say the federal government subsidizes one student every year with two million naira. Is it a lie? How much was your school fees light when you graduated? 44,000 naira. 14,400. 14, 14,400 for, for university education. That even private school, secondary school. Then we still carry our mouth, cost it. They built a bypass for us, no toll gate. No, you are not paying toll. Say now, wow, this place was poor. Nobody want repair now. That's why sometimes when I hear people say, what did the church do for me? What did the church do for me? I'll be looking at them. What did the church do for you? Really, when you came to church, you, can you speak English? Some of you learned dressing in church because you saw other people. All the instruments you used to learn, now you buy them. All the teaching and they, they gave you, they gave you revelation knowledge. You know why you said, what did they do for you? Because they don't give you cash. All the opportunities they gave you to learn and to destroy our drums and our keyboard. It's only in this country that we have people that can play keyboard and not get When I ask, don't say not true. So people can play guitar. Where they are? No. They hone your skill. I'm not saying the church doesn't have its own faults. Get me wrong. All of us came with our issues. Listen, this church has done more for me than I can think of. Why? You were here to receive my errors until I corrected it. You were here to love me when. I was unlovable. You see, I want you to do like this. Put it to your chest. Say, I welcome spiritual authority in my life. That's one of the reasons the Bible was given to you. And that's what round off today. What is inside your, your mouth is victory, security, and the presence of God. Speak that. Don't speak defeat. And what you used to do that most times is praise and worship. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. And that's what David did. David understood that as you praise. So praise is a weapon. It's a substance of God that comes out of our mouth. When we praise God, we release the doorway to the earth. You release the doorway to your home. The fourth thing this year is the year of discernment, not suspicion. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, may I increase in the gifts of discernment at a higher level in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, pray that some more. Pray it some more. You need discernment to know the door. You need discernment to know who to align with, who to partner with. You need that discernment. You need that discernment. 
to know the doors that God is closing and the door that is opening. In the mighty name of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, they talk about the spiritual, um, the spiritual gifts, which are gifts, they are free. We are supposed to op operate in it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said we should lost after it. We should pray for it every day of the week. Look at those gifts and ask God, Lord, I need it. I need it. Many of you are businessmen. You need the gift of wisdom. Before people bring some frivolous things to you and they want you to embrace it, before you know you have lost money. How do I increase in discernment? Pray and practice. Say, Lord, I need it. Then go to places to practice. Yesterday, people went for treasure hunting. They, they prayed together and said, Lord, show us treasure. They went out to practice it and people saw what God showed them. And they prayed for those people and they, and, and they were encouraged. That is how the kingdom is. Our kingdom is supernatural. With practical realities to it. Practice. Number two, be in community. Listen, I don't care how the church is. Me, me, it is. Don't leave. Even if you leave, find another one to join. And don't think they are perfect because you are not perfect. Stay connected and be in community. The more we have relational heat, I am a blessing. We have relational heat. And I use my power to disconnect from her and disconnect from others. I will go and take the exam somewhere else again. I must take it again. Because God is not interested in you having the things. He's interested in your character. He wants to make you like Christ. Be in community. Sometimes what I cannot get, blessing will get it. What can I get, what I cannot get, my wife will get it. What you cannot get, somebody else will get it. Know that and embrace it. Don't disconnect for community. Somebody wakes you up and tells you. And that's what um, uh, discernment. Our sister Juliet in the media said every time she was going to give birth, somebody would stop her and pray for her. Somebody will stop her and pray. It was as, she, as the days of her delivery was getting uh, closer, the prayer was intense. She gave birth and all of a sudden, she started bleeding uncontrollably. She would have lost, we would have lost her. What if the doctors were not there that day? What you cannot see because you are worried, somebody will see it. And most times you are worried. And most times you are worried. Especially when you don't have this money. I don't know. I have to, do, in the name of Jesus, any money that wants to make you to be worried, it will not come your way. Any lack that wants to make you come leave the presence of God, that lack is destroyed. Any money that you will have that you will not trust God again will not come to you. Somebody did not say amen to that one. And as we go home, know that not every door God wants to open. Some doors are trap doors. They are trap. There are three doors that, as we run off the doors of redemption, evangelism and discipleship. God will bring people your way. Do you know why sometimes your, 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 your growth in the body is not increasing? Because you have nobody looking up to you. Nobody looking up to you. And if they are looking up to you, it doesn't concern you. I, I'm not saying alcohol will take you to hell. But you will see the people, you will see your disciples who are sleeping in gutter. You say, why? You say, because I saw you drinking. Openly, you will just do fornication. And you are a leader in church. God is releasing people your way that you will disciple. Doors to position of authority and influence. The girl in Neymar's house. God is going to open those doors for some people. Some of you will be, will be just ministering to people at a local level. Nobody will know, but you are the one calling the shots. Why? 
because you are operating at a level of spiritual gift. And you are giving them those, those cancer. Doors to the resources of heaven. Don't forget that. The resources of heaven will come and meet you this year. Like I said, in time of harvest, you do nothing. You just only go and pluck. You just only go and... The only work you are doing is the work of collecting. May this come to you. Ben, may this come to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We need the sermon to avoid trap doors. And also to enter some great opportunities. Rise up on your feet. Last year, God secured us. This year, said we emerge. I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are. This is a declaration. Every door that God has opened for me this year, we enter. Come on, lift up your voice and begin to make that prayer of declaration. Every door that God has opened for me this year, we enter. Every door, every door, every door, every door, every door. Every door, every door that God has opened for me, I will enter. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. Every door, every door, every door. The one he has opened, not the one I opened for myself, not the one the word opened for me. May I have the discernment to know the doors. May I have the discernment to know the doors that God is opening for me in this season. Even for my marriage, even for my wife, for my children. May I have the discernment to know the doors, even for my nation. Oh, raka barosh karakaria, zeba raka barosh karakaria, reke bosoko rakaria barosh karakaria, paraka baraka basoko rakaria barosh kara, ila baraka barosh karakaria barosh kara, zeba raka baraka basoko rakaria barosh kara. Zabaraka baroshka rakaria baroskara reke bosoko rakaria baroskara zabaraka baraka basoko rakaria reke bosoko rakaria baroskara baraka baraka basoko rakaria reke bosoko rakaria baroskara rakaria mando shekedie boroshka rakaria baraka baraka basoko rakaria baroskara zabaraka baraska rakaria In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, if you have entered a trap door, a door that God says you should not enter, this is not the time to say, Lord, come and validate it. If you are going to Lagos, you enter Wari Road. If you realize you are not in the wrong road, you are in the wrong road and you keep on going, it's ocean you will find yourself. And maybe you can swim through the, through, through the, through the creek and everywhere to get to Lagos. You're going to pray, Lord, give me the grace to turn back. Give me the grace to turn back if I've made a mistake. God will not endorse what he did not send you. Come on, lift up your voice. The grace. Oh, they will laugh at me. That's not the issue. If they don't laugh at you, they will cry for you. Give me the grace. To turn back. To keep on following you. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Grace to turn back. Grace to follow Jesus and his path for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In the next six months, we have six months window to complete the year 5784. Ask God for the grace for this next, this next half. The Lord, the ones that were supposed to be activated in the first half that was not activated, that is supposed to be activated this year, Lord, let it, let it be activated. May I have the sensitivity to know how to follow through what will be activated this next six months. Come on, lift up your voice. Pray for your children. Pray for your family. There are doors of opportunities being opened to you, Lord. If I have missed one, you are the God of second chances and many chances.
everyone, everywhere. Pray for the grace to see the new opportunities that God is releasing. The new opportunities that God is releasing. Come and lift up your voice and pray. Pray in the spirit right now. Pray in the spirit right now. Pray in the spirit right now. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Daddy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, everywhere, we are in different locations. The prayer servants will be here, will be out there in your altar after the service to pray with you. Please go and meet them. We believe so much in prayer here. And if you want to give your life to Christ, they will still be here in all the locations to pray with you and to explain to you your decision. But stretch your hands towards me. I'd like to pray with you. The Lord highlighted this message again. He said, go and tell them. As they enter the, the, the second half of the year 5784. So that they will use their mouth to uproot some bad seeds they have sown. For whatsoever you speak will bring fruit. Lord, I pray for a crop failure for every negative word. That you have spoken concerning your life, concerning your situation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I also pray that you will speak what heaven is saying. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Doors will be open to you that you can never open. But God has ordained it for you to open. May your eyes see those doors. May your leg carry you into those doors. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The people to help you. Moses said, Hope I be our eyes in the wilderness. May God bring people your way in this next half of the year to help you to assess the places that God is taking you to. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men and women that God has placed you on your path. You don't know them. Let me try to tell you before I pray this. There are people I meet. I don't struggle to meet people. When I start struggling to meet people, saying, oh, um, blessing, connect me to this, connect me to this, it doesn't work. And I get disgraced. Not disgraced in a way that is this thing. I know that it's not, I get the, uh, the outcome I don't like. I was in a, in a, in a, in a in a conference recently in the hallway, talking to somebody, another man was waiting for me. And I said, I need you to meet this person. Take down the number. I don't even know him from Adam. And I snapped myself with the man that gave me the number. Send the picture to that person. Immediately the person called me. Only for me to find out. He said, that man and that wife, I don't joke with them. They constantly live in the throne room. And they are just normal, ordinary people. He said, what will make him to stop to say he wants to talk to you that I will meet with you? I pray today and I bow my knees on this altar. You will not struggle to meet the people. Amen. You will not destroy your name to meet those people. Amen. The ones that will take your hand and say, I know him. That's what God has been telling me. He said, there will be a situation where they will say, I know him. I know him. I know him. May that, may that situation, may you come into that level where somebody will take your hand and say, I know him. Somebody will take your hand and say, I know him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May that be your testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, lift up your voice. Begin to thank him. And bless his name. And give him thanks. Come on, lift up your voice. Thank him. Thank him. We're still praying. Bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Amen. This is, um, thank you, sir. Can we celebrate our Father for that message? Thank you. Thank you. It's time to bless our Father with our seed this morning. If you are here, I want to give your tithe, a seed, your offering. Please sit down. If you want to give online, the account numbers will be showing on your screen. Offering, tithe, a rumor, whatever you have vowed, this is the time to celebrate God with them. He said it's a joyful thing to give unto the Lord. The account numbers are showing on your screen. If you want to use your POS, your card, there's a stand behind praise report. The POS machine is there. 
Let's bless the Lord with our offering. Can we have the declaration, please? Let me see. Okay, Lord, we thank you for a great privilege to give to you this hour. We ask that our offerings, our seeds, our tithes will come to you as a sweet smelly savour in the name of Jesus. May every seed will be given at this moment speak for us because we know our seeds have a voice in Jesus' name. The offering basket will pass. If you are giving your tithe, you're giving your vow, redeeming your vow, just come and drop it on the altar. Praise God. We have already listened to the announcement, but just to remind us that the office will be opened from Monday through Thursday for if you, have, if you want to see the pastors. But majorly on Thursday is a day for inner healing, counseling, and deliverance. But before then, you have to book at the front desk office so you'll be attended to. Then this week, we are also expected to be at our live group. If you don't have a live group, just meet any of the ushers. They will direct you to one closest to you. And if you join our church from January to March, today we'll be having a special meeting with you. Don't go home while others are leaving. Just come. We won't take much of your time. We already sent out messages. But just in case we miss you, I'll just stay back. Okay, if you're joining us on a Sunday like this, you're one of the reasons why our doors were open. We'd like to receive you. We have a gift for you from our lead pastors. We're actually celebrating you. Fame builders who can do better than this. If you are joining us, we pray that you come and you are here. Please don't sit down. But if you don't like to come out, we'll still be here to receive you. Then at the close of service, just like Pastor Papa said, the prayer ministers will be here to pray with you consigning anything. We'll join our faith with you and we'll trust you that God will come true for you. We are ready to go. Let's rise on our feet. We are ready to go. No third service. Second service has ended. <laughs> no third service. Let's rise on our feet. All right. Isaiah 61 is what I heard. I was coming up. He said, arise, shine, for your light has come. So this is your expectation this week. Arise and shine. Wherever you find yourself, remember we have been summoned to serve. Arise to responsibility. Stop for the one. So Lord, as we go home, we thank you because our light will continually shine in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for our light will continually shine. Just like to, we are celebrating the Resurrection Sunday today. Thank you for anything that looks seemingly dead in our life as resurrected with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace on all sides. Shalom. See you at the midweek service. See you at your live group meetings. Why you have prayer ministers. Yeah.